You think that's a problem, though? The Cardinals don't smoke enough marijuana, and that's why they're losing? Probably. The problem with the Cardinals is you take that loss last night after that loss the night before, and you wash it down with Steven Matz today. We need some booze. We need some booze. Mm. Man. That game. That game. What about it? Woo! So many different ways you can uh, you can go with it. I think you got to start backwards, obviously. I know, hey, listen, when Helsley gives it up like prom night, <laughs> that last sequence, I know, so he threw a ton of breaking balls in his entire outing. He's got a curveball. He's got a slider. I believe the last three, they're all around 88, 89, so those are all sliders. You did show the guy the same pitch three times in a row, and he took the first two. First two were well located. Third pitch was not. It was center cut, and it was a not a tight slider. And he smoked. And he got it. And he got it. Yeah, dude. That was uh, that was depressing a little bit. And I think it. Uh, there were some there were some bright spots of that game, one way or the other. But that Contreras, when he overthrows, everybody kind of moved. I think they scored on that play too. That was. That was a little bit of a buzz kill, and it went downhill from there. When you're having the t- kind of year they're having in the rotation, which is we spent a ton of time talking about that, as we should, if you get a chance to lock one up like that, you got to have it. Got to have you it, man. got to have it. It's more important this year that Helsley's on top of his game than anybody else. With the way that this is going, if we can't get our superiorly excellent starts, which we well, got another one last night. That's fine. Good for them. You know what's funny? I thought about that. And I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be overly negative. No, you can be. It's all good. Okay, but I'm trying to be realistic because Jake Woodford is still Jake Woodford. He is not Max Scherzer in his prime. What? So my point is when I'm watching the broadcast and after Jake Woodford throws five and a third, two earned runs, that's a nice start, but I feel like we were almost celebrating it as if it was Bob Gibson Oh yeah, going nine. And then I'm thinking to myself, you know what? All due respect for Jake Woodford, that's about as good as we can expect. But that also shows you where it's at. Like, I think most most pitchers, hey, at least go six, allow a couple. Nah. It was five and a third. He allows two. He absolutely gave you a chance to win. But also, I think that shows where the rotation is, where you're almost celebrating. You're celebrating five and a third oh, innings yeah, and two earned runs. I know. I mean, Jake, yeah, I mean, that's it. But that is what you expect. Yay. There. It is what it is. For him, so are you saying that we need to have another – Level of the superiorly excellent start? What I'm saying the is... high quality start? I shouldn't do this, but I look at Jake Woodford starts differently than a Flaherty, than a Jordan Montgomery. Usually Michaelis, although Michaelis hasn't been there lately. But my point is, like, for Jack Flaherty, for Jordan Montgomery, hey, at least go six. Give me a quality start. For Jake Woodford, if he leaves the ball game after five or so, and the game is tied or you're up one, down one, I feel like that's about as good as we can expect. From Jake Woodford. Man, oh, man. Well, what's been happening in these last couple of days, though, is is that you're getting good outings from 66% of your pen, and then one guy comes in and throws the fluid on it. Last night it was Helsley. The night before it was Verhagen. And now you've taken a couple of losses at the hands of um, Blake Sable and J.D. Davis, who when I think about great baseball. That's, that's, they pop in my head. I mean, Lou Gehrig. They pop in my head. You know, Willie Mays, Blake Sable. Yeah. And, you know, J.D. Davis, of course. No bonds in there, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah why it's... not? Ugh. This team is historically trash. But, <laughs> for, but according to the Simps interview with the bow tie pregame yesterday, we're supposed to be patient. Go after yourself, Mo. I'm tired of it. Well, Wombat. We... Dude, people ain't happy. Are we saying that accountability wasn't held? Who who had the interview? Was it Jimmy? Is he chirping Jimmy? <laughs> well, <he's... laughs> Jimmy freezing his ass off. <laughs> Warrior. <laughs> Grinder. Oh man, oh man. Yeah, it's it's goofy. That was They're Carl, goofy. That was Carl Yastrzemski that beat them. No, that was Mike. That was Mike. <laughs> that was his grandson that beat us yesterday. I mean, it is what it is. Man. <laughs> he's a pretty solid player. No, he, he is. He is. He, he is does. Good. He he's kills good. the Cardinals. He's good. He's he good. kills the Cardinals. Nate, what did uh, what did Ollie say afterwards? Is he making excuses? Is he pissed off? I know he doesn't show that much emotion. I guess he's pretty like monotone, but uh, I'd like to hear what he had to say. If you could pull that up, please. I know all the Cokes, I don't know what you're doing on this text. You're confusing the text line. I can't read all that. <clears throat> you, you put it in one text. It makes it easier for me. When you, when you, you now he's talking about moms in the subdivision. I, Stay on top. I'm sorry. I can't. I don't. You're flooding everything, dude. Uh, you want Ollie? Yeah, please. He pitched a hit with two strikes, and uh, he didn't miss it. Um, 
basically what happened. You had a game where so many things went right <laughs> um, all the way toward the end and it gets away. Is that kind of kind of what you guys have been dealing with this season, right? Um, yeah, that was a well-played game. Uh, guy as well. I mean, guys came off the bench, did a nice job, uh, gave us a chance there. The bullpen, Cabby did a unbelievable job. Gio did his. Getting that double play was big. Um, to answer your question, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, we're going through through a tough one, and when you suffer like this, it, it creates some perseverance and perseverance character. And I, I'll tell you right now, this will serve us well down the road. Um, this group's not going to cave. I don't care what people think, um, and this will serve us extremely well when we get into September. I'll tell you that. Uh, baseball is such a game of perspective and long season. You guys talk about how one game to not so overstate what one game can do when there's 162. This is a funeral. When a game turns like this from <laughs> something that you could celebrate with that rally uh -huh. to the dead. now we're here. And <laughs> I know. Does it make a bit different? Is it, is it a bit different than just a single game that you can dismiss? I think I just answered that. We're going through stuff. <laughs> Derek the Gould. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Pelsey got hit hard early in the inning, but did it seem like he steadied himself? He came back with with a good slider to, to in the previous inning. Yeah, made some pitches after that. Yeah, has got him pretty good. And then um, Ali's pissed. Oh yeah. To get the next two outs, um, he was able to make some pitches that, that served him well. But then uh, that one there to the lefty got him. Some uncharacteristic defense to uh, not to speak pick louder. Up one thing, but there's a couple runs there that speak that helped create. When you make it. Them. It is um, yeah. I need to go start covering um, them day to day. Um, hey, uh, Ollie. Uh, down, hey, Ollie. Wow. <laughs> hey, Ollie. Right, enough of that. Ollie. Oh, my God, is that depressing? What well, the hell is well, going on out what, there? What were they even saying? Well, you talked over him, so how would you know? <laughs> I don't know. Well, at the beginning, <laughs> I mean, when, when he. Well, I did you talk guys over have three hours to talk. <laughs> you could have let Ollie go for like two minutes. My bad. That's okay. My I bad. have to say, I agree with Nate on that. You're right. Some of these days we play these clips and. All right, oh, it's like, dude. Wrap it up. We have. <laughs> oh my God. We I didn't say it wrap up. it up. We have three hours. They only talk for about Listen, three and a half minutes. I got six hours of content over here, baby. Don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, we're good. But he did say something where it's like, oh, hey, when we get to September, this is going to look good. We're going to be in a great spot. <sighs> really? You're uh, right, Nate. My bad. You really got to get hard. You do. You do. Get hard. Was that Ali? Cardinals, no. hard, hard <laughs> contact. Hey, Samba. let's focus on the positive, by the way. Let's focus on the positive. And this is pathetic. It is yeah. pathetic. I know he took an O for yesterday, had a great first game back, sat, came off the bench. Paul DeYoung hit the ball very hard both times. So there you go. Yeah, that's a positive. He was one for two both times, ripped the baseball. Newbar looked good in the outfield. Through a bomb. Oh, he's, guys, let's not do this. He's a solid, solid all-around player. Let's not do this. What, Matt? What, what? are we what? doing? Why? What Matt, happened? What? what happened to him? We're trying to dig for gold here Burleson's at this point. catch. Burleson's catch. Yeah, all right. That no. was a good catch. Uh-uh. It was a good Jesus catch. Jesus Christ, what are we doing? Nope. Why do you, you bring JC in this? <laughs> nope. 9 and 15. Yeah. It's man. early. Hey, this will benefit them. In you don't September. understand. Matt, what you don't understand, listen to Ollie. Mm -hmm. When you lose, it benefits you. It does. <laughs> It's good. It's a good thing. I let me, let me say this. I, I don't know that much. I don't know that much. But when you're looking for silver linings at the end of April, things yeah. ain't going the way it's supposed to. I'm sorry. Are we covering the Cardinals yeah, or are, are we covering the Pirates? Oh, no. The Pirates are having the season the Cardinals are supposed to have. So I guess we are covering the Pirates, who re-upped Brian Reynolds yesterday, by the way. How about them spending some cash? What world are we living in well, where the Pirates games. are spending cash, putting their outfield together, the Cardinals can't figure out a damn thing, Who's it going to be? Who's going to be the pick to click today? Who's going to blow it this afternoon? Or is Matt's going to get it so far out of hand Ooh. that you don't even have to worry about it? I don't know, man. We should start doing that now. Yeah. now it's, it's very it's negative, but I like to unclick. it. We should start do, you know, who who's going to ruin it? Is this yeah. the is this the accountability that we're asking for? Cuz I'll bring it. I will bring the accountability. Who's going to ruin the game tonight? Who's going to do it? Hmm. hmm. Let's look at the lineup. Check out the lineup. Don't worry. We have $18 million Adam Wainwright who can't touch 88 miles an hour and getting shelled by double-A players coming to save our season. Waino chirping people on Twitter on how he's going to put a war paint on is the saddest way for a man <laughs> to go out with a career he has put up. Reality is the team is just not good and should just sell off the depth for next year. So what did Waino do on Twitter? Is he? I got it right here. I did see this. I thought it was funny. I kind of felt bad for him. But he's a. Hey, he's making eighteen million, so he's fine. 
So Katie Wu puts out a tweet. All that it is is his numbers. No opinion, no nothing. Just Katie Wu puts out Adam Wainwright's second rehab start went like this. Four and a third innings pitched, seven hits, three and runs, one walk, one K, 74 pitches, 52 strikes, blah, 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 blah. We'll see if Wainwright will pitch a third rehab outing. Of course, if you check the comments, <laughs> a lot of negativity. Oh, here comes 41-year-old throwing 86 miles an hour. And Adam Wainwright responds. He says, looking forward to proving every last one of you underneath this wrong. Thanks for the motivation. There's a balance. Read the comments and get depressed, or read the comments and put the war paint uh, on. See you soon. I don't know. I don't know. What's it? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, so we're, that's pretty funny. That I try not funny. to look at the no, screen during good. the show. It, There's on on uh, what is this? Get up, ESPN. Yeah. Fernando Tatis is dancing the chance of he's on steroids in the outfield. He's doing the gritty. <laughs> How do you have? He had ringworm, right? Yeah. That's why he, he took, took it. That, yeah, that allegedly. So what do we have, what do we have to look forward to? No, this week? I take Tatis on this team right now. Hell, are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. Are on you the kidding Jews? me? In the roids, bring the roids. That's how I said. How many people? Maybe put Tyler O'Neill on the roids so he can hit a dinger every once in every. <laughs> how many people can we trade for him? He's, he's awful. <laughs> Tommy Edmond, did he forget how to field? <laughs> Didn't doesn't Jim always play that clip of Nolan Arenado saying Tommy Edmond is the greatest defensive shortstop he's ever played with? <laughs> Tommy Edmond can't field diddly. <laughs> Goes back to the Phillies series. All these balls are hit on the ground. I mean, we can talk about this not happening, pitching not working into the sixth inning. Tommy Edmond gets a ground ball right to him. Field the damn ball. Yeah, let's put together that Tatis trade because now you got me Do going. Do you think Seth's softball team would have fielded that ball? Solomon would have been. Solomon would have been losing the top that, mine, boy. Do you think Solly would hold the Cardinals more accountable than Ollie? Because I think he might. I think so. Based like on it, what I saw last week, yeah. Yeah, dude. Like if Solly was the coach you. of the Cardinals? 100%. Oh, I love manager. that. Manager. Not, not bench coach. We're talking manager. And 15 hits, 15 runs. runs in, yeah. in one inning, I mean, I don't know. And maybe Solly knows where the roids are at. They need they need steroids back. Every time I see that back. ball. They, yeah, well. Back. Yeah, they need steroids back. Well. They had it in the 90s. Oh, now you, they're tested every damn other day. That's why he got dinged for 50. Yeah. But every time I see that ballpark, too, I'm like, this reminds me of Barry Bonds just jacked out of his mind. Like, I'm going to hit this bad boy into the depths of hell. <laughs> it goes way and it's into the darkness. The Cardinals have eight Love pitchers. That. The Cardinals have eight pitchers on their staff with negative wars. <laughs> like they, they, Is they, that they, good? The, you, the, your replacement value is actually that less – of a, of a player that should be on a major league roster. You also faced a bullpen game started by our, our good friend John Brebbia, but you faced eight different pitchers, which is, I understand. Look, if you have one A-B versus one guy, then you have to move yeah. on. That's not, that's not the easiest thing in the world, but still look at the names they're throwing at you. They threw eight dudes at you. A bullpen game in April, and you lost it. I know, dude. And you had, you had it. What's worse, Wayno's tweet or his country album? Just ride off into the sunset, you old. Oh, man. It is kind of nerdy. I, I mean, it, it's not that big of a deal, but it's like, I just stay out of that. It's just his hobby. Just go play, dude. You know, you're just going to get tore up, man. Well, we, <laughs> you're not going to win this that This man battle. is not allowed to have a hobby in his off, in his no. off time. No, no I don't no. care about that. Just to tweet stuff, I'd say I just wouldn't do it. You're not dedicated Let's unless you're all in. You're right. I would not I would not send that tweet out either. I wouldn't do it. I just stay There's just no me. value to it. No. Nah. All right, Charlie. It's all negative. Charlie, give me a Matt's prediction today. I want some innings, and I want some hits, and I want some what do you runs. Think? I want to know if, if we need throw... to – are we sliding the scale? Yes. All right. A Cardinals high-quality start. Not because I want to. You're just asking me my opinion. Yes. I feel like every Cardinals pitcher for about three weeks, every line was the same. Five and a third. Three earned runs. Five and a third. Yeah. Three earned runs. Ten hits. Oh, soft contact. Soft contact. Mm-hmm. That was the line. They I just, worked their tails off. I kept off. watching the game. I kept watching the post game. I kept looking at the box score. Five and a third. Three earned runs. <laughs> like, that was for two weeks straight. You're trying to get a new chant going? I know. Like, just go over the bullpen, <laughs> just do that. Don't what you think game? that's about fair for Matt? It's about five and a third. Probably two or three allowed. Yeah, that's okay. Again, that's okay. The man's making 11 schmill a year. It's a lot of coin. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of coin. Cam, can you ask Nate if his extra added high noon will feature any of the Cardinals beat writers, Andy Felterbush? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? You should, dude. Who would it be? Who? Who why? I don't know. I, I do. I mean, I have you, Rob you, Rains on from yeah. time to time. He's great. I'm not yeah. going to have one of these simps on. Yeah. 
I don't, I don't talk to limp wristed beta, <laughs> beta boys. Males. Yeah, I love how we've brought Simp back. <laughs> I hadn't heard Simp since like '99, well, and tripping. I love that it's back. It's back, dude. And and, and now Jimmy's a Simp too. <laughs> By the way, Simp replaced and me. Cock. and you. Cock was the last. No, the there. last couple years, everybody cock. said Cock, yeah, yeah. and now it's Simp. Now it's Listen, Simp. I enjoyed Simp when it was here the first time. Let's go. Yeah, Let's whatever. Keep that around. <laughs> By the way, can I bring one more bear of bad news about sure. the Cardinals pitching? Oh, no. So Buster only said, ask Slang on sports how many games the Cardinals have played with their team ERA at 4.48 or higher over the last year. So this is how many games they've played in a season where their team ERA is 4.48 or higher. Uh, I'll start from 2015. So 2015, great pitching. They had zero. Zero games where their team ERA was higher than 4.48. That's pretty good. 3-16, 7-17, 5-18, 11-19, 8-19, 21, 21 out of 23 games this year. They have a, an ERA of 4.4. Now, obviously, September's gonna be fine. obviously it's inflated early because you have less time <laughs> and they're to, to go low. And, yeah, that's the other argument <laughs> is that they aren't very good. Once September comes around. All right. But they've already point. surpassed all those other yeah. years, I said. So yeah. I think that's a, a great – Point. I did see that. And I think this is an interesting debate, potentially. I'd like to hear all your guys' opinions and also the text line. So we know, especially the last couple years, that Yadier Molina was not hitting at a big league caliber level. We get that. And neither was Kisner. So you had to get a catcher. You had to. And you get one of the best top five-ish offensive catchers in baseball. He can throw the baseball. Very good thrower of the ball. However, he's, he's not the greatest receiver. I'm not even talking about pitch framing which a lot of people focused on. I just wonder, because Yachty was one of the best of all time at being a receiver, at handling a pitching staff, not just controlling the run game. If you talk with pitchers, there's also a comfort level. There's a rapport. They like to throw to somebody who's a big target, who knows where to set up, who you have confidence in, in terms of calling pitches, so on and so forth. So I'm not, I'm not trying to say, I'm putting this all on Wilson Contreras. But again, last night, the last three pitches, you did, show, you did show Sable the same pitch three straight times. And the third time, he hit it about 400 feet. So I do, I do wonder just about, it's, it's first year also. So you're, you're, you're basically, all these pitchers are, are starting to get comfortable or try to get comfortable with Wilson Contreras. But I don't think we can discount for 20 years, Yachty is a Hall of Fame receiver, catcher, Handler of, of pitching stats. When you looked at all those stats, like the ERA when Yachty was the catcher versus other catchers was oh, yeah. insane. Yeah. The disparity was insane. So I think that's something we should also think about. So when you when you see him just just optically when you're watching Willie and seeing Yachty for all these years, like do you notice a difference just the way he catches the ball, just the way he presents himself behind the play, how he's organized, talking to the pitcher? Do you notice it when watching baseball so much? You could see that. I can notice some receiving and some pitch. Framing. I think they both throw the, ball, the baseball really, really well. But I think this is more, what I'm trying to talk about, is more of an intangible. It's more not even in the games. It's in the bullpen. Okay. It's talking in the meetings. It's figuring out how to pitch sequence, right? It's kind of knowing, it's knowing the hitters. It's knowing the hitters that you're competing against and trying to set them up and trying to set your pitchers up best to succeed. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. I mean, and we said that. I mean, I remember us having the conversation saying that's going to be the big thing to watch because when these guys fell in the ruts, everybody on this staff, including Wayno, that's grown up in the Cardinal system at least, has always had Yachty to fall back on. Now you're having to learn how to do your job a little bit different way. and You don't have him back there to navigate you through, to tell you what to use and how to use your stuff when maybe you're not trusting it, but he knows that hitter one particular way. He knows how to go after it. You compound that with a new with a new uh, pitching coach. You've got all these different things going on. Listen, these guys have got to perform. Yeah. I'm not letting them off with it, but you got to account for that. It's not like it didn't happen, and you can't, on one hand, praise Yachty and say he was great at handling staffs and doing all these things, and even though he wasn't hitting, he was still invaluable to have out there because of that, and then just say, no, it's all on them alone. He, I mean, he brought that to the table. And again, because he's in Puerto Rico. I'm not saying well, that's the main reason they're losing. I do think that's a component. I think that's a component. Just it'll be weird to uh, when you had Yachty back there. There was just a comfort level. Yeah, there was a comfort I level. He was a big dude. You you looked at him. His target was always right there. I mean, if you ask any pitcher, they love throwing to a big target to a guy who spreads out, 
and basically that glove is, is bisecting right there, their body. And you can just see it. It's easy. Boom. I get that. It's going to be weird seeing Wayno pitch to uh, Willie anyway. A little different. Uh, see how he adjusts to it. Sharon chimes in. Wayno is a sensitive dude. Saw him at Whole Foods after he blew his Achilles and asked him how he was doing. Then I said the team was doing okay without him. <laughs> and he got <laughs> mad and walked away. I only meant that the team was doing well. He used to audition. or He used to adulation, and I can't handle any negativity, apparently, uh, Sharon. Aw. I get what you're saying. And, and some of these guys, I, I, look, I, I get that. Like, you got to kind of brush that right off. <laughs> Team's doing great without you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Sharon. You know, I mean, <laughs> she's probably like, no, no, I meant the, you're you're good too, but they're good. Oh, it's like, calm down, Wayno. It's the Ewing theory. Get, get your guitar out. Oh no. Get your guitar out. <laughs> uh, let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine him, and he knows what's coming. He knows what's coming, but he just goes to Twitter. Oh, let's just let's just check these old comments. You want to read them, by the way? Yeah, let's read some of them. Oh, I did no. go through I about. Know. There was, there was a couple positive ones, but mostly... Uh, Andy's getting beat up on Twitter, too. <laughs> Big all right. Time. You want the comments? Yeah, man. There's about... <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah. Here are the comments underneath Katie Wu's tweet. Can an 87 velocity pitch MLB today? There's a lot of typos, by the way. Can't wait to hear his excuses when he's bad again. Should have retired last season like his buddies. <laughs> an ERA an ERA of seven and a whip of two. Looks about right. <laughs> washed. Somebody says washed. Washed. Here's a positive. What? Kind of. Fire the pitching coach and manager. <laughs> insert Wayno and Yachty. So they actually want Wayno, but they want him to be the pitching coach. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Somebody says work. 17 million well spent. Oh. Somebody says, oh, great. Bring on Grandpa Charlie mm. to save the season. What about when he said something? What were the comments to his direct tweet? All right, let's find that. I bet you they're more positive. Let's so, see. Twitter's weird with that, man. Like they Oh, are. here we go. Go ahead. Get him, Wayno. Okay. Looking forward to watching you prove the doubters wrong. Right. Obviously, they don't know Wayno. Yep. You got this, Wayno. You got LFG. It. Let's F and go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so goofy. Somebody says, I must say I'm perplexed. One, using comments on Twitter for motivation. And two, adding fuel to the fire by commenting. I know. Good luck. That's kind of true. It's so true. I don't mind it, though. It's good for us. It's good for us. And he goes to Corner Butcher, so. Yeah, what was that all about? He's a, he's a big-time grill master, dude. <clears throat> Doesn't he live uh, interesting? I good think he likes him. to go to all the different butcher shops yeah. around town when he's on the road. He's just big into uh, barbecue. Really? Wayno? Well, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You go to a, a, a butcher shop on the road? Yeah, he said he went to Springfield. Well, I mean, he's going to get food. He said he's going to Wichita, check out different uh, barbecue spots. We should be. So what's Working he doing? on that pitching. What's he doing? Sending it back home? There's no way you're walking around with that. I'm just saying he's yeah. big into barbecue. Is he bringing he's coolers going, with him? He's going to all the butcher shops around St. Louis. If I he's get on that. the road, he's going to the best barbecue spots. We could relate. I like the barbecue, too. Right on, man. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> I need to hear how the simp will spin this. Oh, was man. podcasting. Did he really say he thinks his team can string seven or eight wins together? Wombat. Which simp is he talking about, Jimmy? Everybody's a simp now. I can't keep up with Because he calls Jimmy the, uh, the cat a simp. What's the definition <laughs> then of a simp? you guys call me a simp. I didn't call so you. Are... No, no, no. I, you're not a simp. Matt, can we you're look just doing up? some extra work over there. I would have to use to get a more slang session. to explain it. <laughs> I know, but I want I want like the Urban Dictionary definition. Urban Dictionary of a defines it as someone who, who who does way too much for a person they like. Oh, that's pretty matter of fact. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's a good okay. definition. I was going to say it's somebody is tricking off, but essentially tricking off is doing that. So, I could say, yeah, all right, a man who puts. <laughs> can I say that? I don't like know. A, like, that's, that's is it like a guy right a, a guy that just l- loves a girl? Does anything for, her, but she's hanging out with other dudes and kind of tagging them along. Oh, a guy that's people. overly desperate for women, especially oh. if she, if she is a bad person or has expressed her disdain oh, for him. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Sometimes you got to shake your body, dude. You just got to shake him and smack him in his face and be like, "Stop it!" Wait, why is there an article saying new teen slang? Is this article from like 1996? Simp. Here's what happens: things get into the mainstream. <laughs> And yeah. we, the culture, have been done with them for decades. But now they're being used again, yeah. and it's treated like it's new. But here's what's funny, and I think this is cultural. This is, this is where the society has, uh, has shifted. Remember that book, The Game? Did you ever read it? Mm. 
there was a there was a, a, <laughs> a reality show. No, it's a great book. Oh. You should read it. One of the best books I've ever read by Neil Strauss. He was basically a pickup artist, and he goes through the network of pickup artists in L.A. of how to pick up women. They wrote a book about it, and the whole thing was called nagging. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Mm, I've so heard nagging of it. is the opposite of simping. So this was about 15, 20 years ago. The whole deal was you actually kind of put the girl down. That's yeah. a nag. You don't show her the attention. Yeah. When basically four women come up to your group of guys, you purposely don't talk to the most attractive one. Yes. Because she's never had that happen before. Yep. Every experience in her life, she gets all the attention. And by nagging her, by not showing her attention, she's more attracted to you. 100%. And now simping is the exact opposite. Uh, yeah. That works. By the way, no, you're right. That works. No joke. Talk to the, this talk is to one the of ugly the one. Best books you'll ever read yeah. by Neil Strauss. He wrote for Rolling Stone. He wrote the biography of like Jenna Jameson, Britney Spears, a oh, oh, bunch of people. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, it's a great book. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to. I think I know what you're talking about. I'm trying to align this, though, to make this of a make pickup sense. Artist. I knew that. Yeah, I knew that line back in the day for sure. So. Wait, I'm still also trying to figure out who's the simp here exactly. So is it Jimmy's a simp? Is it Moe's a simp? And they said Seth was because he's doing extra work for the neighbor, but I just no, think no, no, Seth's no, a no, good no, dude. No, 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 no. Seth's going to get some out of that. Absolutely okay? not. Seth's going to get some out of that. Seth's got money. a plan. It's going to balance me money. money. It's going to balance himself. And that's it. No, you can do you can yeah. that you're not a simp. You can do, you can, you can have a little bit more. It's all good. Money and other things. Seth's got a plan. He told he's me all about it off air the other day. Yeah. Seth's got a plan. <laughs> but... So if you're crushing hard on somebody who may or may not like you back to the point that your actions can seem a bit pathetic, if that's Mo, is Mo technically, if he's the simp, is he tanking the team on purpose or are we not using this word the right way? Because it's a funny it's word. It's not Mo. Well, listen, I love Jimmy. They're coming after Jimmy. They're coming okay? after Jimmy. Okay. And I'm, I'm Jim. not going to do that when he's not here to I defend know. himself. I will when he's here. Yeah. I will when he's here. But I think you can make the case that are Mo and Ali also simping for a pitching staff that isn't very good? Pumping their tires up. There's so many definitions. We like you. You're good. You're the, so good. You're so good. You're so much better five than one third. five ERA. Yes, you're Wait good. A Wait a minute. Hold on. So now, simping. <laughs> when a male is overly submissive to a female and gains nothing from it. Yeah. There's yeah. also a theory here called the simp pimp. Where a simp pimp may acknowledge or give small rewards to the individual. <laughs> like little trinkets? Gifts. <laughs> it's a self-aggrandizing term for people who openly abuse the generosity and kindness of simps. Oh, Talk to me, Dad. I know. So that's a simp pimp. So maybe Mo is the simp pimp. Yes. Because he's over, he's he's benefiting from the genera- generosity and kindness. Talk to me, Daddy. In this scenario, it sounds <laughs> like the, the simp, simp pimp would be a woman, though, right? Like the woman well, well, or, is or, taking, or, okay, or, right. or, or. If if it was a a woman, a gay relationship, but in this scenario, it sounds like the woman is taking advantage of the simp and getting all the simp gifts. Yeah, man. women they are hot because simp or pimp is similar to smash or pass. Yeah, which is where instead of judging the sexiness of somebody, it's an opi- it's opinion in the amount of respect you would give to that person. Question: Is this again? This is all different definitions. Over the years, we changed the definitions of the same thing. Back in the day, is this any different than friend zone? Which is you had the dude. Who loved the chick. I know. Oh, we're friends. So she never wanted to hook up with him. No. She never wanted to date him. Didn't go to Never prom. wanted to sleep with him. Didn't but go to prom she would take him. all the rides. Yes. She would help with the homework. Yeah, he would I help know. out. He would be oh. the friend. She would break up with the boyfriend. She would go over there and cry on his shoulder. Yes. But then she would move on to, or go back to the dude. We all know one. There, somebody like that. There's also the, the simp in a pimp's clothing theory. Oh, really? So <laughs> that's when a, a person who mistakenly believes himself to be very attractive. Oh, God. But when, in fact, the opposite is true. So he feels like he's pimping. He's moving around. I know those guys, too. But instead, he's the guy that runs up to the bar and buys nine drinks. Yes. And then they all walk away from him at one time. (laughs) I I know that guy, too. He's actually hilarious. The other guy's a pathetic loser. Can I use it in a sentence here? (laughs) So... Yo, look at Will. He'd be pimping hard. <laughs> nah, that ain't no pimp. He ain't never even touched a girl. That's a simp in pimp's clothing. I like it, dude. Those guys are kind of fun, though, because they'll still buy drinks, and the girl's just like, go I want to take all this in the context of the Cardinal season, though. Oh, like, man. none of this matters if we can't assign this to people up to the start of this season. Oh, well, we are, I think. So is Mo, yes. is Mo the simp because he's signing all these bad pitchers that aren't performing? Kind of. <laughs> Kind of. <laughs> yeah, but they, they still think Jimmy is because uh, he's not asking hard questions. I think that's where Wombat is taking this whole thing. Let's break this down. 
in baseball, so in, we're talking about relationships. In relationships, your currency is love. In baseball, your currency is money. So you're simping by paying money instead of love or attention. You're paying money to people who don't deserve it. So Miles Michaelis go. with a seven and a half ERA He's and paying Steven, her out. Steven Matz with a six and a half ERA. They're the pimps because they're getting the cash and they're getting what they need, but they ain't giving nothing ain't back. Not, nothing in return, man. Hey, five and a third. Ain't Come bad. on, grinding. Sharon goes. Uh, I also just realized Wayno blocked me. I don't even get harsh with him on Twitter. All those Cards fans who responded to Katie Wu, better be careful. They'll be next. He blocked you? Oh, At least mute. That's funny. Don't Good. give the person. You're a simp. Yeah, don't give the person the satisfaction of knowing, knowing. you got to. But if I unfollow you. No, just mute. Yeah, but if I unfollow you, do they know I unfollowed you? 100%. Oh, just mute. Oh, boy. I'm starting to do that, you know? So they'll pop up and said Cam unfollowed you? No, they will check. Every once in a while, they'll say, oh, there's Cam. Oh, wait, he doesn't follow me anymore. Oh, okay. But it's not immediately. I don't think they get a notification. Okay. Yeah, I think everybody in this room should make sure they still follow each other. You never know. You yeah. never know who's moved on from you. Yeah. Screw that. I'm deleting everybody. Okay. Sometimes they I don't do want to follow on, anybody. On accident, though. Sometimes they, you will like press the wrong button. I'll go through my following, and it'll be like 10 people that I never had any intentions of following. Oh, oh is that what you tell them? Dude, for, like right when you started, you're like, oh, this guy's cool. This guy's cool. I'm like, no, no, they're not. Get out of here. Get out of here. Chuck, can't Helsley shake him off? Wombat. Yes. I'm just saying I think this is a component of the problem. I, I don't think you can discount how great of a defensive overall catcher Yadier Molina was for 20 years, and there's going to be a drop-off defensively, even though there is going to be a very big upgrade offensively. I mean, and even outside of defense, there's going to be a definite downgrade in how the game is called. That's Yachty, what I'm saying. Yadier might have been the best game. Okay, I, wasn't cons- I didn't know if we were talking about the error or not, because when I think about calling the game, I don't think about that necessarily as defense. I think about that as baseball IQ. And I'm talking about calling. I think the texture was talking about calling pitches. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I yeah, if he's talking about shaking off. But, I mean, you're, you're going to have a drop-off in two of those huge things. It's just going to happen. So how do you – number? but the thing comes down to chemistry. Like, you know, Contreras said, I'm not going to play in the WBC because I need to learn the staff. I need to figure it out. Well, it's time because now you're under 500 and you're chasing 25 games big time in. already. I think it's fair to say you could shave off a full run off the earned run average with Molina behind the plate, Gino. That's fair. Seth, so, which would still, still have Michael at six. I know this is difficult, but can we try? There, there's been a bunch of tweets and articles over the years that compared Yachty, the team ERA under Yachty, versus the team ERA under whoever was the backup or when Yachty was hurt. And it was ridiculous. Yeah, the difference was stark. The U.S. dollar is dead. Oh, boy. Buy Bitcoin now or wait until the AI bots tell you to. Banks that are run by the government are now failing, and Bitcoin is responding as a hedge and is up 6% since the FRC bank collapsed yesterday again. And, it, and, is, and it's this FRC bank was already bailed out just a few weeks ago. Interest rates will continue to rise throughout 2023 with no sign of coming down. I have my life's credibility on this take. Jackie Parlays. So Damn. Is, is the U.S. dollar a simp? I don't know, man. Yeah, great call. Jackie Parlay sometimes just throws bombs out like that. Like, I think he just really gets into so many different things. And I think he's listening, but he's so like fixated on that particular text that he's not realizing we're talking cardinal baseball. And he just throws it out. But I have to read it because he's interesting as hell. And he party with us down at uh, Mardi Gras. Great dude. I need to hear how the simp will spin this. What's podcasting? Did he really say he thinks his team can string seven or eight wins together? Did I already read that, Wombat? You did, but keep okay. going. You did. And that's where, I think hey, you put it in again. We can respectfully disagree. I, I don't see this particular version of the Cardinals going on any long winning streak because I just don't think they can string together no. that many quality starts. I, I, I think you're right on that. Anyone else notice that Woodford looks like a pilgrim? Throw a belt buckle hat on him and give him a boy some trousers and a Thanksgiving dinner. He Look, does. Looks like a singer from the Mayflower. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great take. Hey, let me see him again. Dude, by he the really way. does now that Look I think about it. Look his ass up. He looks like a pilgrim. He 100% does. Like <laughs> Miles Stanley. From the 16 hundos. Do we have all the promo days at the ballpark accounted for already? Or can we get the big pilgrim buckle belt? They yeah. wear that out there. Put the Cardinals pilgrim hat together. Let me see him. Does he? I think he does. 
a pilgrim. He kind of looks normal. Text line. He kind of looks normal. Text line. I need to ask for it. With the hair. Put me though. a Jake Woodford pilgrim picture together. <laughs> I need to see it. I can't wait for Wainer to come back and give up five earned runs and three innings, and he'll laugh it off with John Denton and the other soft beat riders saying he got beat by weak contact. Nate's texting Stop the show. It. You're right there. You got a mic. Stop they, it. They don't. <laughs> I, they, they, you can't fool these Texans, man. They don't. They don't put up with that crap. What May we, I say though? John Denton's on a lot with Bernie. He's not a dude that just uh, simps for the team. Okay. He's not. He, he pretty much calls it like he sees it. The manager lost his clubhouse when he went after O'Neal. No. Ollie's way over his head. That was a good – dude, it, it, I, I, I'm not saying it's all correlated, but that, that was kind of odd. And it, you, you're kind of starting – you're digging yourself a hole off the bat by just doing that and being loud, and now you're losing, and now it's like – it's just – I don't know. <laughs> what, Charlie? Do you agree? I do. I was trying to find a picture of Jake Woodford. I'm much more yeah. concerned about yeah. whether I, he looks like a pilgrim. On, I'm working on it over but, here. Uh, no, I, I think that's a fair point. I'm not saying they're losing because of that. No, but I don't think there was a lot of value in Ollie doing that in public. I get it doing it in the clubhouse. I just I felt like early in the season, clearly there was some history there. Yeah, I know. Remember when Holiday was on? Yes. He's Remember still- Holiday is very good friends. With Ollie. Yeah, I know. So you can you can kind of see Ollie and Matt having friendly conversations with each other. Of course. Where maybe they share some intel. And so when Matt came across and said, basically, this isn't the first time there's yeah. been a hustle type type uh, issue. To me, I'm thinking, well, Ollie probably told him that. I know. That's what I thought. Right when he said that, I'm like, oh. Because he could have just been like, well, I don't know. Um, you know, I didn't. He could have played it a billion different ways. But he's like, no, this, this is a common theme. But again, now if he did it 24 games in, you're like, okay, you got some time to really evaluate. Maybe he's done it a couple times. But that early and being that like, whew, man, <laughs> we're all like, okay, that's fine with all right. us. So for Yaddy's career, I found it. You got it? When he's pitching, the Cardinals had a 3.70 ERA. When others were, were, were I'm sorry, when he was catching, 3.70 ERA. When others were catching, it was a 4.12. So about a half a run. Yep. For for twenty years ish. Yep. For seventeen thousand nine hundred and eighty innings. That's a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> a full half a run. Cam, Andy has some horrible tweets about back to back Stanley Cup champs. I go, yeah, I know. He's getting rocked on there. You should read some of those comments too. <laughs> and now I'm getting dragged into it, you know? Well, that's yeah, you amazing. Can- you got to go in. I'm him. getting dragged. Everyone's like, what's he on, Cam? I'm like, dude, he's having an opinion. Calm down, you hockey psycho fans. Who Andy's gives here. a damn? He Andy's didn't say, here. you know, I, I'm with Stalin back. I, no, he, he's talking about. Stalin. I'm with Stalin. I'm with, he's, he's talking about a hockey take on a, you know, on a, on a weird COVID run with, with, the, with the Tampa Bay Lightning. It's his opinion, but he's getting murdered, man. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, murdered. I'm not an NBA, uh, NBA uh, enthusiast anymore, okay. but a lot of people think that LeBron's bubble championship isn't a real championship. It's goofy as hell. So that, that's being discussed in basketball as well. And not to mention their other Stanley Cup when they beat the Montreal Canadiens that were a 500 team. It's like, okay, there's, there's some truth to that. Now, do I think that team's great and they're Warriors and this, that, and the other, and they're loaded and they – but, yeah, man, there's – you know, you could, you could bring that up. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> I ain't arguing. Seth Self that. Simpin ain't easy. Coaxy. <laughs> That's a tongue twister, man. Anytime I got to say your name and say something else. Simpin ain't easy. Simpin ain't easy. Question. Somebody can you, do it. Can you but draw a, a line? Being a prostitute's hard. Go can ahead. you draw a line between Andy getting ripped on Twitter and more people going to your podcast? Like, does it stir up some uh, attention for the oh, podcast? Probably. You know, stir, you know what stirs up attention? <laughs> when Berkey talks about anything, that, that stirs up attention. We'll get into that in the 8 o'clock hour before Have we Have no fear. Berkey didn't give a damn. Let's see here. Um, if the birds are 15 games below 500, the break at the break they're going to be se- are they going to be sellers? If the birds are 15 games under 500 at the break, Bush Stadium ain't going to be there no more. Man, no, it'll be there, but people are going to be pissed. It's going to look like when, they're going to be throwing trash on the field. It's going to look like when Bang got a hold of that stadium and. When was, the last, when was the last time this Cardinal fan base really, really struggled, really got pissed off? I mean, well, I'm, not, I'm not talking. You 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 kind of get I'll, limp I, into I the. I know where you're going with this. 
there's a whole generation of people that, talking that, that there's a whole generation of people that lived in this city that's never seen the Cardinals be bad. I know. And they struggle with it. I've seen it. I was here in the early 90s when they were dogs. Really? Dogs. Were they supposed to be good? No. Okay. But they were dogs. That's the difference. <laughs> people have never seen it before. It's like what Patriots fans are going through right now. What do you mean we don't win the Super Bowl every yeah. year? You don't win the Super Bowl every year. That's just not the way it is. With that being said, this team shouldn't be bad. Those teams in the early 90s weren't any good at all. But, no, it happens. I think they're going to burn the thing to the ground if they're not good. Ollie giving off major Schilt vibes in his pressers. It's nauseating. You think Golly G. Oh, yeah. The Golly G. Hey, they're working their tails off there, eh? Golly G. G. Golly. Yeah, man, I get that. Do you want Matheny back Sometimes for these pressers? I, kind of. <laughs> I want some pitchers back. Well, this is where I think it, it <laughs> yes. goes back to the O'Neill comments. Because now he's he's um, he's put himself in a corner. You're damn right he did. Where if he says something now, it's going to be perceived as, oh, here we go back to ripping the team. But if he coddles the team, now the media and all the fans are going to say, well, he's too afraid to call anybody out. He He's not going to tell it like it is. So he sort of did this to himself. He did, dude. And that's where even if the clubhouse, like, forget what the players think of that whole incident about Tyler O'Neill. I have a feeling most of the players probably side with Ollie. Like, what the hell are you doing? Hustle around third base and score. I know. But at the same time, both can be true where it's like, dude, don't go run to the media. That's just as silly. You're putting us all in the spot, Immature. Dude. I know. You know, and everybody's the affected supposed by that. to be held to a higher yeah. standard than running to the media and calling out the guy not hustling around third. And now you've just created this weird dynamic. I think anybody watching this team, they don't have an identity, and it just seems like – Oh, they if got- they allow one mistake, it blows up in their face, and it's just culminating in, in what's been a horrific April. I'll argue. I agree I, I'll agree with nine out of the ten things you said there. The one I won't agree with is they've got an identity, and it's being simps to throw the ball like oh. a softball team <laughs> and, and, and have the ball hit over them. they got to score 16 oh. runs a night to hang Text in the game. Line's blowing up. Hold on, but not, not Sally's softball team. Seth's up. Oh, they wouldn't keep up with Sally's team. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? I do think there could be a happy medium. For example, remember the Flaherty game? I I was at that game against the Diamondbacks. Flaherty did pitch really, really well through the sixth. But then he didn't in the seventh, and he went homer, double walk, and both of the runners that he left out there were given up by Andre Pallante. After that game, and I understand, we're critiquing the manager's comments more when they lose. I understand that. But after that game, I believe Ali said he pitched terrific. (laughs) Yeah, And all I'm saying is you can say he pitched terrific till the sixth, and then he didn't. And then when you look at his overall line, it's not terrific. That's it. I don't think that's too much to ask. I think there can be a happy medium of, hey, man, he was great for six. Whoo. But, boy. Lost it in the seventh. Yep. Overall, not great. We can be better. We didn't get the outcome we wanted. Speaking of Jack. We might be getting ready to get the best of Jack. He gets the audition for the Dodgers on Friday. There you and go. then he gets to come back here next Thursday. 12-15 start, Flaherty versus Otani. Oh, Lord. Ooh, I might go to that one. I'll be there. I want to see him. We're due to go to a game. Let me clear my schedule. You see Shohei? You should, too. Right Let's there. go. A hot take central. Yeah, I'm going. Let's go together. Why don't we go next I don't seat? need nice seats. I just need to get up, find a bar, what? and do our damn thing. What? Where do you want to go? Oh, we'll walk our way in it. What? You don't need nice seats. I'm just telling y'all, I'm not going to sit... I don't like sitting in the stands part when the sun's coming down. I like to walk around, go to a bar, check out different bars, do my thing, you know? You require a seat that has a bathroom directly behind Matt, it. Matty. And that only happens you know when, I you don't go, play. when there's a door that leads to your seat. It's not a, <laughs> I'm just not telling a aisle. You. Walking up and down them stairs, I'll blow a tire. <laughs> <laughs> Clip off Matty saying simping ain't pimping line. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Keep that. Uh, somebody goes, what a terrible conversation. No. Oh. I'm like, what? Why? I was way back there. I don't know. That's My a simp comment. Worst conversation ever. I disagree. What, what talking about the Cardinals? Sorry about or that. Or the simp part. Yeah, but we're, we're, tie, also we're tying, tying it, it together. In. Somebody brought it. We didn't bring that up. They brought it up. Get them in, by the way. 552828255. Text line's blowing up. I'm trying to get to all y'all. Uh, let's see here. Where's that currency text come from? Wrong show, dude. Drink bleach. I guess that's to uh, our boy Jackie Parlay. 